Hey YouTube, what's up? It's me, Maxter, and we're back with episode 17 of Behind the Mod. And for this episode, we have a newer modder on the show. We have um, Elucent, if I'm pronouncing that right. Hello. Yeah, yeah, you're pronouncing it right. Cool. Um, you make the Roots mod, which is an up-and-coming kind of magic-themed nature mod for, uh, I guess, more recent versions of Minecraft. And you also have done, it's not your first mod, though. Uh, you've done some other mod work and also some other texture work. So I guess some... Um, how did you get started with uh, contributing contributing to the community? So I've been playing this game for quite a fair amount of time. I think it was beta 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, and I always like to make like servers and things for friends. And eventually I just sort of got into modded. I think it's a natural progression. And uh, basically what sort of, I think my origins of this was, it was 1.7. I liked to... Uh, I had like this really big kitchen sink. I think it was maybe 240 mods. Jeez. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know it's not the biggest out there, but it was it was a sizable pack. And uh, eventually, like, I just got to the point where I had played a good number of the mods out there that I wanted to play. And I was wondering if I could add anything else or, you know, just get a little bit further on in the uh, Minecraft community. So I think the first thing I did is I went on Reddit and I just opened up a thread saying, does anyone want textures? And I got a good number of responses to that. And I think, I think the, like at least one mod from there, maybe a couple more. I don't remember exactly. I still do textures for. Huh. So could you, I guess, uh, could, do you remember the names of any of those mods? Like uh, any of the big ones or main ones you did? Uh, the only one that I remember like right now was called Essence Armory. It's by a... Uh, Friend of mine, uh, Escapi, Escapi. I don't know. It's it's like e Escapee. Anyway, uh, it's sort of like a armor mod. I basically just did a bunch of armor textures. It was my first time actually doing like textures for a whole mod. So I guess that was sort of the big, the first serious one that I did. So do you think uh, making textures like that kind of prepared you for I guess um, designing a standalone mod, like or I guess a, a mod of your own, like you did with the roots? Oh uh, yeah, like. So originally when I made that thread, it was because I wanted to give something to the community, but I wasn't sure if I was willing to code my whole mod because I never really had programming training. I just sort of messed around with C++ a little bit. So originally I just sort of wanted to make textures. And then while I was making those, I, was, I sort of thought, huh, I could make all the resources for a mod. Why don't I, why don't I give a shot at coding one? Hmm. So um, yeah, you've gotten started, I think, uh, how long has Roots been around? Like a few months? Uh, I think two months. I started developing. I I started developing it. I think two months ago, and it's been released for one month. Huh. And uh, I guess from a more conceptual point of view, like, um, what do you think were the main inspirations behind Roots? Um, obviously it's kind of like a nature themed mob, but it also has um these, I guess, um ritualistic element elements. It kind of reminds me like personally, of Blood Magic and Batania. Did you kind of um, have inspiration from those mods or some other stuff? So my original inspiration was, I think it was two mods. First of all, there's Witchery, which is a mod I've just loved forever. I love it so much. It's one of my you know favorite mods of all time. And I really liked how it, all, how it incorporated all these different materials that you had to farm or gather in different ways. And then the other mod that influenced it was uh, Reliquary. Because at that time I had a 1.8 pack that I was running on a server and I put Reliquary in because I hadn't really played with it that much before. And uh, it just adds drops to everything. And so I was sort of thinking one day after I got done with like a previous project and I was a little bored with it. Uh, what if I just use some of the lesser known materials from vanilla? And so I was trying to think of things that didn't have that many uses. And I mean, what do mods really use the vanilla flowers for? So that was just sort of my basic idea. I wanted to do something with like vanilla plants that weren't used that often, and it was originally going to be a pretty small mod. Huh. I, I can definitely now that now that you say it, I do see the witchery inspiration because witchery is such a um, great mod at like integrating with vanilla um, in terms of how it works. And I think Roots is very sim similar to that. Like you're not, um, it's not one of those mods like you know Botania where it adds stuff or you know Thomcraft adds ores, adds essences. It actually takes what's there and kind of um, incorporates it in a way like I don't know, almost like a way like Mojang would. Um, you know, obviously if maybe if they had the idea to do something like that. It, 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 I guess it feels more, um, I don't know, like natural. 
Uh huh. And I think part of that is also from back when I made like mod packs for servers that I ran with a few people. Uh, one of the worst things about having like a 240 mod mod pack is if you want to add something, then there's world gen. So that was just another thing that I think shows itself in roots. Just the fact that I really, I spent so much time just trying to incorporate mods into existing worlds. That I just sort of wanted to make something that, you know, didn't have that concern. Yeah, I guess kind of non-intrusive, but there, like if um, able, yeah, it is, I guess, adaptable. You know, you can just break something and um, get the stuff you need. Um, that's a pretty neat, uh, I guess, design approach that I don't think we see lots of mods use. Um, in terms of like... Um, I guess developing for newer versions because Roots is, I think, on like one nine and one ten, which are basically the same thing for modders. Um, what's it like to develop in such a kind of uh, wild west style environment at the moment? Because we don't really have that many big mods updated yet. I mean, I think the actual development process is sort of the same as it would be otherwise. Just because you know, when I look at adding new things to the mod, it's just I add new things and I come up with ideas and I put them in. But I think the fact that it is sort of a newer version has definitely added to the mod's like popularity a lot. And I think in turn that sort of inspires me to keep you know going and uh, just sort of do more interesting stuff with the mod. So I think from the actual like coding perspective, I don't know, like the new version, I never had much experience with 1.7, so it doesn't feel that different. But I think there is definitely a lot of, it, it, it's definitely gained a lot from being on later versions. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think um, it. First of all, I guess it gives you more exposure, but also you kind of fit in with this. Um, well, you, you're not trying to compete with Thomcraft, or you're not trying to compete with all these other mods. Uh, you, it's kind of like a new frontier. Um, um, it's space basically um, in Minecraft, so that's kind of cool. Um, have you seen Roots in any um, like 110 packs yet, or do you anticipate kind of seeing it in any um, packs? I mean. Uh... So, so far, the big one that it's been in was uh, All the Mods, which, I mean, the name says it all, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that updated to 1.10 pretty quickly, I think. I, yeah, and they, uh, I mean, because 1.10 1. 1. doesn't really have that much different. Uh, I think I'm going to have to make it so that the mod has a separate version for 1.10 soon, just because it's something we did. But really, packs update pretty fast, and so I think all the packs it's been in so far, like All the Mods, notably, I think there was a something called a Risen, uh, those still have it. And I also noticed earlier today, actually, it got added to FTB Unstable. Oh, wow, yeah. Is, uh, interesting. I, I don't know. I feel like, um, personally, uh, this is just, I'll go just on a quick tangent. I think FTB Unstable, like, adding roots is smart, but, like, I feel for like for a while now, FTB Unstable, I don't know, maybe hasn't been what it used to be. Like, uh, we we have all the mods now. Like, we have these packs. Um, as we approach a new version, obviously, we you know we're in early stages still for 110. Um, we have all these packs that kind of throw every mod they can in that fits together. And um, I think Roots is a great mod to do that with, and it's great to see that in all the mods. But it is, um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like FTB Un, like. I don't know. Maybe it's um not necessarily a negative thing, but obviously FTB is a very um I mean they like to um, they don't like to change things too much. Um so I think it's really cool with curse and stuff and of course technic. Um we see this opportunity for the community to kind of incorporate these mods before um you know they don't have to depend on the big guys to kind of include it. Um they can make it themselves. Yeah. Although I I can kind of see where FTB unstable is coming from because. On these later versions, because FTB likes to be very polished, you know, yeah, it's sort of a very, yeah. it's always stable. And there's a lot of mods for 1.9 and 1.10 that really just aren't quite at that level yet. I mean, if you look at like FTB Infinity and you look at how many mods in there will cause like crashes if you load them wrong or have just features that just plain don't work, there's not that many. I can't even think of examples off the top of my head. Whereas if you look at like 1.9 and 1.10, there's just, I don't think there's quite that much yet. I mean, I was surprised that Roots got in. I mean, I, I think that's just something that's going to change in the near future. So, yeah.
Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to complain about FTV. They have their own style, but it's definitely, I don't know, I guess my point was it's just, um, it's good to see that there's an opportunity for stuff that isn't like that. I mean, even though the, it has the name FTV Unstable, it's still, you know, um, a name, a pack with FTV name, and they don't want to have it crashing, you know, every three minutes or whatever. So, I mean, they, they have to be careful. But it's cool to see, um, I guess, your mod kind of in there finally, because I think it's definitely one of the up-and-coming mods that people have been looking at more and more. Um, like just the other day on the FTV sub, I saw um, a video spotlight for your mod, which is really cool. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Uh, I mean, obviously there were like the Dyer and Rorax ones, but some of my favorite ones have actually been some of the smaller uh, YouTubers just spotlighting the mod. Uh, I don't know if I can think of any specific examples, but yeah, there's just been a lot of really positive feedback and, you know, I think it, I think it inspires me a little more to keep going. Yeah, definitely. Like when you have, um, I think, I don't know, like I feel like Witchery, it's kind of weird because it had lots of this ex exposure. It was in Attack of the B team, but like I wanted to learn it a few months ago and I just couldn't find like a good video spotlight. I think that's changed now, but um, I guess what I mean is early on, it's really good to see a mod like Roots having that, I guess, um, unofficial documentation or just commu community support. Um, that's like hugely important for a mod. And I think at this stage, it's really cool to see that already in place. Oh yeah, definitely. Like the amount, the amount, the amount of community support it's been getting is just like, it blows me away. I never expected anything like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and like in regards to guess like community support, um, obviously like, you know, we have the big magic mods like Thomcraft and stuff. And, um, they're, they're known not only for, uh, you know, being huge mods, uh, obviously that have, you know, been in the oven for a while. Um, they have lots of add-ons and stuff. Um, do you see roots, um, as it, I guess it matures cause it's still so young, but like as it grows, do you see, um, the potential for, you know, um, additional content coming for like maybe from other developers too, kind of like Thomcraft add-ons? Possibly. I mean, the mod is open source, and I know one of the other devs who's working on the project, uh, he threw together a very simple add-on a while ago, and just, just to test if it would work to add like another spell component, add things to the uh, like in-game documentation, things like that, and apparently it was pretty easy. But I think the mod does suffer from sort of the same reason why, well actually, never mind, I was going to bring up Witchery, and then I realized, you know, Witchery is closed source. But uh, it, I think there's not necessarily... Like, if you look at Botania, or if you look at, like, Thomcraft, they have a lot of materials you can easily exploit and turn into different things. And they have a lot of very solid mechanics. And I'm not sure if Roots is really there yet, and I'm not sure if it ever will be. It's just gonna, it, there's a whole lot of very different and a lot of very unique subsections of the mod that I'm not sure how well an add-on would fit. But on the other hand, I have seen people in, like, YouTube comments saying, can we get an add-on for the Botania flowers or things like that? And that would definitely be possible. I'm not sure if I'd be the one to do it, but someone else definitely could. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, um, I don't know. I kind of look forward to that. Um, if it does happen, um, I'm sure, I guess that's kind of one of those things that maybe you just have to let happen. But um, yeah, I guess it, as the mod will mature, um, hopefully, I guess, uh, so will, I guess, the com community support for it. But already, just looking on the CurseForge page, there's um, eight pages of comments. So um it's i think and you know you reply to a lot of them so i think that shows like really good community engagement uh that i don't think i've seen for a while because like lots of other developers nothing against them like i totally understand why they do this um like we had Vosky on he said um maybe because they're bigger developers um right now they say that they don't like you know having a bunch of people saying oh this mod crashes my game in the comments so they disable them um, and I mean, you know, that makes sense. Uh, they have their reasons, but I think it's really cool to see how you kind of, um, go in the other direction. You, uh, let people give all their feedback. Um, you know, some of it, uh, probably reasonable, some of it probably not, but, um, it's definitely, I don't know, I think, um, just good to see all of that, uh, in there. Uh, cause I don't see that with lots of other mods, it's been, like, especially lots of other content focused mods like this. So... I don't know. I'll, I'll def I'm definitely interested to see how that develops. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's definitely something I just try to do. Just try to respond to all the things that are, you know, worth responding to. There's a couple times when people have, like, glitches that they solve themselves 15 minutes later, but I just try to be fairly active. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely noticeable. 
Um, I guess looking towards the future, uh, where do you see Roots Roots going? Aside from obviously, you know, getting it more stable, getting it more feature complete. Um, like, what are the big things you're, I guess, um, going towards? Um, well, I'm not really sure exactly how it'll play into uh, like modding in general in the future. I mean, it's it's gotten a pretty positive reception so far, and as I've said to a couple people, I don't even think it's good yet. So we'll see. Uh, I know I don't want to spoil much, but I do know for the next update, which we are working on and we're, we're making pretty uh, rapid progress on, uh, it involves a lot of... Uh, it, I have a lot of things that are going to definitely change the tone of the mod and make it, I think, a little bit more sophisticated. Like we're going to be adding uh, a lot of nature spirits and just sort of a lot of mobs, just sort of adding new living entities to the world so that I think the world feels a little bit more alive as you're trying to progress through the mod. Because that's something I like to do. I like to make it so that there's things in the world that you encounter that you don't necessarily have to go and mine, but you can just sort of collect as you explore, and that's how you actually progress. Uh, and then, obviously, I think eventually we're going to get uh, a little bit more endgame, but I don't want to spoil anything just yet. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. So I guess if you kind of were, had to pick like a theme for the mod in terms of, say, like uh, what theme of mod pack uh, would you kind of expect it to see in it, um, see it in? Would it be like exploration? Possibly. Uh, a lot of it depends on sort of like I I like to I like to say that the mod is very exploration based because when I've played through it and when people who I know who played through it have played it. They go on like huge expeditions of like thousands of blocks trying to find certain rare plants so that they can make new spells and try out new things that they haven't before in the mod. Like some major points in the progression will require require things like vines or things like jungle bark, which you can only really find if you find certain biomes. And so you do have to explore a fair amount for that. But it is a little bit iffy because you could theoretically just get a spawn where you have everything immediately accessible to you. And so, I would say it's I would say it's definitely exploration based, but it might not be as stable as mod pack authors are looking for if you're looking to progress around it. So you kind of um, I guess, I guess it's more about finding a balance. Um, you're trying to, I guess follow progression of the normal game and not try to have your own branch of progression. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of the things I liked to. Uh, I like to fit in. Like a lot of the game, a lot of the mods progression right now is very distinct stages of things you can get on the first night, things you can get when you have a base, things you can get when you get to the nether, and things that, that you can get when you get to the end. So it's definitely vanilla progression based. And I think also another part of vanilla progression is you start exploring outwards more. And uh, I'm not sure exactly if the mod in its sort of, uh, sort of, it doesn't have a very static progression. You could you could, depending on the random generation of your world, progress with the mod very quickly or very slowly. And uh, I think that's something that maybe if you have a very like precise HQM like quest-based pack that requires you to do like these things in this order, it might get a little bit annoying to players. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it would definitely fill sort of an exploration role and also just a general magic mod role. Yeah, I mean, this might not be, I don't know, uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe we will be proved wrong, but I have a feeling this won't be the type of mod that people uh, make HQ on packs for, like, oh, make every item in the mod, each one being a quest. Uh, I have a feeling this is probably going to be um, something we see in lots of vanilla style packs, like, you know, FTB, Vanilla Plus, and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess, um, be, uh, thank you so much for coming on today, and I guess before we close out, uh, do you have any like closing thoughts, or um, like any... I guess, um, stuff you're working on aside from Roots, or just are you focusing on Roots? Well, so recently, and I do have to say, like, as just a general closing thought, I would, if I could just thank the entire, like, modding community, just the amount of support that I've gotten ever since I started, like, teasing the mod on uh, slash r slash feed the beast, uh, like, two months ago, just, it's really blown me away just how much support it's getting. And then... Going off of that, another aspect of the support is that there's a couple people who have approached me to like work with me on the mod. Uh, currently, I have actually just a Discord channel with like three three collaborators at the moment who we're all just sort of working on roots together at the moment. But we do have a few potential extra projects planned. I would say just stay tuned for now. I don't have anything concrete, but we we might be working on some other stuff. 
Awesome. Um, well, yeah, community is awesome and great to hear that um, it's been benefiting you as, as I guess, an up and coming modder. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for coming on today, and thank you all of you guys for watching. I know this was kind of a different episode, um, different kind of modder on, and um, I think it was kind of nice to have uh, someone fresh and new on. But um, yeah, it was really cool having you on, and um, really cool, I guess, having you guys all listen to this. Um, bit of a shorter episode. Hope you guys appreciated that, and uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye.